Welcome to my zone online school. My name is teacher Mutsa. Get your education booklet in our daily newspaper, street sales, or at your school every Monday to Thursday for pre-primary up until grade three. The lessons are for listening or watching online. Inside the newspapers, there's an insert of the lesson booklet. Please cut the top of the lesson booklet with a pair of scissors and fold it for ready to use. But there is more. We are also available on our online platforms, MyZone and Zoshi Facebook pages, and in addition, our website, Zoshi Online. and welcome to my zone online school my name is teacher Mutsa and thank you so much for joining me today our theme this week is winter and before we get into any lessons my dear friends we know that we have to sanitize remember during the winter season we have to stay warm so drink lots of warm liquids especially tea and lemon water make sure your hands are dry before you touch anything else for today's lesson we will be doing syllables and time Let's start our lesson, boys and girls, by going to page six. On page six, we are going to be doing syllables. Now, the way we're going to be doing our syllables today is by clapping. We're going to clap and then write the number of syllables by showing how many claps. Now, they've already done A for us, but we need to make sure that it is true. So, let's take a look at the board. So, the first thing we're going to do is read the word normally. When we read the word normally, then we will slow it down. After slowing it down, we're going to try and clap to see how many times we need to clap. So our word is good. Everyone, let's say good. Good. Well done. Now let's slow it down. Good. Good. Well done. Now let's clap. We're going to clap and the number of times we clap is the syllable. Good good how many times did we clap for the word good if you said once well done that is the correct answer so the answer they have given us in our booklet is correct so i'm going to write one now let's do the next word the d word so on D, we are doing the word winter. Let's say the word winter. Winter. Now, let's slow it down. Winter. Winter. Now, let's try and clap. Winter. Winter. How many times did we clap for the word winter? If you said we clapped two times, good job. So I'd like you to please for number D or the letter D, we are going to write two because we clapped winter. Now let's do the last one together. I, we have the word lonely lonely let's say the word lonely 
Very good. Now, let's slow it down. Lonely. Lonely. Good job. Now, we are going to clap. Remember, we are slow. Lonely. Lonely. How many times did we clap for the word lonely? If you said we clapped twice, well done! So that means that the word lonely has two syllables. The rest of the exercise, boys and girls, you are going to do by yourselves. Remember, take your time. You're going to start by reading the word normally and then you slow it down and then you clap. The number of times you clap is the syllable. Take your time and I'll see you soon after the advert break. Follow us on My Zone Facebook Active Kids to watch your daily lesson and other fun activities with Zoe and Zoshi. For the next part of our lesson, boys and girls, let's all turn to page 7. On page 7, we are going to be doing time and we're going to learn about all the parts of a clock. Let's start with the actual numbers. Now you can see that we have 12 numbers and they go in order. Then we have two hands on the clock that we call an hour hand and a minute hand. Now I'd like to show you these so let's take a look at the board. So first we talked about our numbers. As you can see, we start at 12 and we go all the way round back to 12. This direction is called clockwise and we move with our hands. Now these are called hands, not arrows, but hands. The one in red is called the minute hand. It is much longer than the other hand and it moves quicker as well. And when our minute hand moves round, it goes back to 12. The next hand we have is the shorter hand and that one is called the hour hand. This one just touches the number, not like the minute hand which actually touches half of the number. So, when you're looking at a clock, the hour hand moves much slower than the minute hand. So, we now know our minute hand which is longer and moves faster and then our hour hand which is shorter and moves slower. After that, we will talk about how to use each and every one of them. So let's go back into our exercise and take a look at what they would like us to do. So now that we know the parts of a clock, we are going to ask, what is the time? They are asking us, as they move the hands. Remember, the minute hand is the long one and the hour hand is the short one. So, let us take a look at how we're going to say two o'clock. Now, I have my clock here in the classroom and I have my minute hand pointing at 12. Now, when the minute hand is pointing at 12, we know that the time is o'clock. O'clock. Well done. So, every time the minute hand touches 12, we know that we have o'clock. The first one you can see in your book is 2 o'clock. So, we have to move our hour hand. 
and we place it pointing to two. Now we have said it is two o'clock. So every time we are reading our o'clock, we start with the number. Here we have two o'clock. Let's try a different one. What is the time? Remember, boys and girls, we start with the number. So we are going to say five o'clock. Well done. Let's try and change it again. What is the time? Well done. If you said three o'clock, good job. So we now know that this is three o'clock. And then there's another important position that the minute hand goes to when it's going round and it is on six. Now we say instead of o'clock when it's 12, we now say half past. So the minute hand is showing us that it is now half past the hour. If we put it at six and we have three, we are saying it is half past three. Now this is different from when it is on o'clock because we said we say the number first. But if the minute hand is at six, we say half past first and then the number. So let's try a few. I have already half past three. What if I move my hour hand to 11? What is the time? We say half past 11. Good job. What about if I move it to 8? What is the time? Half past 8. Good job. So, remember, when we're doing our o'clock, we start with the number. So, if my minute hand is on the 12, we say 8 o'clock. And then when we are doing our half past or when our minute hand is at 6, we start by saying half past 8. Now that we know the difference, I want us to try the next exercise on the next page, page 8. On page 8, we are continuing with time and it's our job to read the time below as well as write it. You can see that when we are doing our time, the minute hand and the hour hand are not only different sizes, but also different colors to help us identify them. We are going to do the last two at the top for number one. It has the minute hand on 12 and then the hour hand is on 11. So what number or what is the time? If you said it is 11 o'clock, well done. I'd like you to please write 11 o'clock. Remember, they're writing it in words, so we should do the same. This is how we write 11. We have our E starting first, a small letter. Then we move on to the rest of the word. So you will write 11 o'clock. Let's do the next one. Let's take a look at what the next one looks like. So the next time that we're going to do has the minute hand pointing down at six and then our hour hand is pointing in between four and five. So what is the time? 
let's take a look at the board now because the our hand is in between four and five it has not yet passed five but it has passed four so we can say half past four because it has past the hour of four. So this is how we're going to write it. We have half past and then the number name four. This is how you write your number name. You can go ahead and copy this one on the board. So we know what to do when we are writing the time. But what about if the time has been written for us and we have to put in the hands? Let's try and do number two. Number two now is asking us to draw the hands of the clock to show the time. Now they have reminded us again that the minute hand is the long one and the hour hand is the short one. So we're going to do the first and the second one together. The first one says 11 o'clock. So I'd like you to please take a look and see how you're going to do 11 o'clock. Now we're going to start with our minute hand. If it is o'clock, we have said that it needs to point to 12. And not just point, but even be inside the number. Then we need the actual number we were given. The actual number is 11. So your hand is just going to touch the number. And this is how you're going to draw or write 11 o'clock. Then the next one is half past four. So we're going to start with our minute hand and bring it to six to show that it is half past. And then we need to move our hour hand all the way to four. Remember, our minute hand needs to be right by the number, even passing it. And then our hour hand is the short one, just touching the number. So we have now said half past four. Remember, you can also put it in between four and five, but I would think that Putting it on four is much safer so that you have your correct answer. I'm going to leave you to do all of this by yourselves, boys and girls. Remember the rules we have been talking about for o'clock and half past. Take your time and I'll see you soon after the advert break. Do you have children in the age range of five to six years and want to participate in our school booklet program? Please contact us on 081 and we will put you on our distribution list for the attention of pre-primary schools. Topics include family, summer, culture, traditions and houses, transport and communications, occupations, autumn and more. We distribute countrywide in over seven different languages. Boys and girls, we have now come to the end of our lesson and I hope you had fun. I know I did. Remember, if you're not sure what to do or you don't understand, that's okay. You can always ask an adult for help. But just make sure that you finish your work by yourself. So now that we are done with our lesson, it's time to sanitize. Remember, boys and girls, we are talking about winter. So that means we need to stay safe as well as stay warm. Make sure that you are always warm all the time. Make sure your hands are dry before you touch anything else. I wonder where Soshi is. I have not seen him the whole day and he was supposed to help me with something. Soshi? Oh! <laughs> There you are, Sashi. Are you ready to go and help me with my special project? Wonderful. So, from Sashi and I, we would like to say thank you for joining us today and goodbye! <laughs>
Find us at www.zoshi.online and download the booklet. Follow us on Facebook to never miss a video. Subscribe to our Zoshi Telegram channel if you want to receive daily updates. Proudly sponsored by the Ministry of Education, Arts and Culture, Namibian Community Trust, UNICEF, MyZone Online School, Amos Mirkat Syllabus and Capricorn Foundation.